In every corner of the globe, and located in any of the seven oceans of our world, you will find representatives from the United States Navy. Recurrent in the history of the United States Navy are attempts to dismantle and discard the wrongly maligned seagoing force from the disbandment of the Navy after the American Revolution to efforts after World War II when a few short-sighted individuals thought that armed conflict could be resolved by an airplane or a single bomb alone. In the last two centuries, the United States Navy has more than proven its worth and secured its place among our armed forces. And its place is everywhere and anywhere. As President Bill Clinton once said, The word of crisis breaks out in Washington. It's no accident that the first question that comes to everyone's lips is, where is your dearest parent? Using the most advanced technology and maintaining a presence as a first responder to natural disasters and a first line of defense should any nation seek to attack the United States or any of her allies is the mission of the United States Navy. Join us in our continued look at the history, battles, and the men and women of the United States Navy. A good Navy is not a provocation to war. It is the surest guarantee of peace. Notice, travelers intending to embark on the Atlantic voyage are reminded that a state of war exists between Germany and her allies, and Great Britain and her allies. That the zone of war includes the waters adjacent to the British Isles. That, in accordance with formal notice given by the Imperial German government, vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or any of her allies are liable to destruction in those waters and that travelers sailing in the war zone on the ships of Great Britain or her allies do so at their own risk. Imperial German Embassy, Washington DC, 22nd April, 1915. In April of 1915, German submarine forces, known to most of the world as U-boats, had begun in earnest a trade blockade of the United Kingdom and other allies in Europe. This essentially meant that German submarine crews assumed that any ships passing through or near the area of blockade would be a threat, either directly as warships or indirectly through secretly stowing military ordnance or other supplies. The ocean liner RMS Lusitania had operated for the Cunard Line since 1907. At the outbreak of World War I, she took precautions to avoid enemy ships, such as painting the hull a slate gray, but still operated as a passenger liner. By the time of German exclusion, Lusitania had returned to civilian colors and was no longer as cautious as she had been at the outbreak of the hostilities. Indeed, the Lusitania's patronage had dwindled somewhat, and in spite of warnings placed in New York newspapers by the German embassy in the weeks before launch, on May 1st, 1915, with nearly 2,000 passengers and crew, the ocean liner set sail from New York City en route to Liverpool, the ship's home port. Seven days later, the ship was identified and shot by torpedoes from the German U-boat U-20. The liner sank in 20 minutes, 11 miles off the old head of Kinsale, Ireland. The Lusitania was not equipped with enough lifeboats for the scrambling passengers and crew, and the attack killed 1,198 people, including many American citizens. The attack would prove instrumental in the decision at long last for the United States of America to enter into World War I. In 1913, President Woodrow Wilson assigned future president Franklin Delano Roosevelt 
to serve as Assistant Secretary of the Navy under Secretary of the Navy Josephus Daniels. Daniels himself was an ardent supporter of the Navy, and measures taken by Daniels, such as barring liquor from Navy ships and forbidding prostitution within five miles of any Navy installation, served to create a strong and efficient fighting force. Roosevelt backed these measures wholeheartedly and was just as adamant in his negotiations with Congress and other government departments when it came to budgets and with shipbuilders and other contractors that sought to undermine Union shipbuilders. During FDR's time as Assistant Secretary, not a single shipbuilder's strike occurred. Roosevelt's measures helped expand the Navy exponentially, including the founding and development of the United States Navy Reserve, as well as acting as an early proponent of submarine warfare to combat the German U-boat fleet. Shortly before the sinking of the Lusitania, when it had become clear that Germany was engaged in all-out submarine war, Roosevelt urged President Wilson to allow the Navy to outfit for war. Wilson refused. By the following year, the United States Navy had been mobilized into action on the seas surrounding the United Kingdom. As World War I drew to a close, Roosevelt oversaw the demobilization effort, but outright opposed the emerging ideas about dismantling the Navy altogether. Roosevelt later said, Our security is not a matter of weapons alone. The arm that wields them must be strong. The eye that guides them clear. The will that directs them indomitable. Germany's fleet of U-boats numbered only 29. However, in the beginning 10 weeks of World War I, the submarine force had sunk or disabled five British cruisers. The Germans practiced unrestricted warfare, meaning that their torpedoes fired indiscriminately at merchant and passenger ships, as well as military vessels. President Wilson repeatedly warned and scolded the Germans, who ignored the president's threat of United States entry into the war. Finally, on November 17, 1917, the United States Navy destroyers, the U.S. Fanning and the U.S.S. Nicholson, became involved in the first victory over the U-boats. The German sub U-58 moved to attack the British merchant ship SS Welshman when the Fanning and Nicholson dropped depth charges and opened fire on the U-boat when she surfaced. The battle ended in German surrender. It would be the first of only a handful of victories over the nigh unstoppable enemy subs in World War I. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.